Your country needs you. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Cartoon Commentary. I almost said Toy Guys Talking, although... This sort of is Toy Guys Talking, and, and this will be available on the Toy Guys Talking podcast uh, worldwide. And joining me tonight, uh, as always, or as usual, as always, I hope, because um, I really <laughs> I really love doing these commentaries with you. It's Eric Lutz. Eric, thanks for joining. Oh, well, thank you very much for having me. I quite enjoy these as well, so looking forward to this one. So uh, if you're wondering out there what brought this about, Rambo, Force of Freedom, Episode 1, First Strike... Uh, everybody or a lot of Rambo fans uh, got their Rambo fever reignited thanks to Last Blood. And um, after seeing Last Blood, I felt like I needed to wash off the Last Blood a little bit. So I went back and Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I needed it is so dark and depressing. It's got its oh. fun parts, but um, it definitely if you thought the fourth one was was violent, the fifth one, I would say is pretty much just as violent maybe not as many people being liquefied by a 50 cal but <laughs> it is it is like the, it's more like the punisher type of cerebral uh mm. soul crushing dark violence um because they they crush him they absolutely break his spirit uh in the typical 70s grindhouse revenge style uh, we're talking death wish where they don't just wow. hurt kersey's family they ruin like they absolutely ruined kersey's family um, oh, wow. forever and ever like there's no there's no redemption there's no coming back and healing from what happened to Paul Kersey's family and I felt like that's that's what they could have happened in Last Blood except um, then they decided no it's it's an actual after the ruination and horribleness then it's you know I, I don't want to be spoiling the movie here but it's there's a finality mm -hmm. to it and so then it just turns into like an empty revenge picture not too different from The Crow like but mm, but mm -hmm. the but the crow is a you know it's it's such an incredible um, I never like calling it a movie because it's it's a monument it's a tribute to Brandon Lee um, but you know um, it has this kind of he's an avenging angel in it and, mm. and to me the crow is a beautiful story of an avenging angel and Last Blood was not a beautiful story of an avenging angel um, yeah it's just visceral. Yeah, you know, it, those kind of movies, they really walk a fine line with me. And I think you hit it right. Rambo 4, it was violent, but it never crossed that sort of sadistic line. Yeah. And that's one of the things I really have a problem with in movies is when they they cross that line where it's not just about the revenge or the violence or any, anything. It's it's that 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 sadism that that almost like uh like torture of characters that you know mentally or physically that that really gets to me it's like you know a difference between like halloween and 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 um um uh, what is it? The the um, what's oh god? What's the movie with the uh, the tourism one? Um, oh gosh, I'm totally blanking <laughs> on the title now. It's one of those that I saw like once. Um, Hostel, thank you. Hostel. Yeah. Yes. Oh god, that movie is just. <laughs> I you just. I know what you mean. You want to wash yourself off afterwards. It just feels gross. Yeah, and when I read these Sobs books, because every time I read a Sobs book, I say, hey, if you like Rambo and the A Team, this is right up your alley. Um, there was one book in particular, Soldiers of Barabbas, 80s mercenary, uh, Pulp Fiction type of stuff, uh, where it looks like the colonel's main squeeze, they're going to do something awful to her. And as I'm flipping the pages, I'm going, please don't. please, Because that's that's one of the things that I think is a, a crossing of the line. And they, and they didn't. And I was relieved by the end of the book because it's still, at the end of the day, supposed to be entertainment and somewhat mm -hmm. fun. I mean, you can have some grit in there, but... I don't like certain lines being crossed. And the big thing with Rambo 4 for me was when they capture the blonde missionary, the girl, they never show you a shot of a guy walking away from her cage doing up his pants. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's people who say, well, obviously they, they had their way with her. Okay, if you choose to believe that, that's fine. But if you choose to be more naive and uh, hopeful about your entertainment, then you're totally i think within your rights to say they hadn't gotten around to it yet they were mm -hmm. they were terrorizing her and tormenting her they were they were torturing the guys um and killing them but they didn't cross that line with her at least um mm -hmm. at, that line is not just crossed in rambo 5 it is uh is jumped over over and over again it's run over wow. by a, by a uh 
<laughs> like a, a monster truck. Uh, no, whoever was writing that movie wasn't at all concerned about, well, you know, does this cross the line? Because that's fine if it's Death Wish or Death Wish 2 or Death Wish 3, because that's, that's the bar that's been established. That's what happens in this world. That's never happened in a Rambo movie before. They've never mm -hmm. gone there. So I think fifth movie in, when you decide to start doing that, that's where I think the complaints are legitimate, where people can say, wait, this is not the world you've established. It's, I don't think it's any more appropriate than if someone in a Star Wars movie was assaulted in that way. You know, or strung no. out on drugs, and I just don't think it, it belongs in that world. Yeah, I think you you really hit on it there. It's that it's that um, when you've when you've established the the lore and the story and 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 the level at which that world operates, I think it's once you once you cross that line, I think it just doesn't feel like it fits in with the others. You know, yeah. like you said, none of the other Rambo movies. You never, you never saw it to that level, and even though Rambo Four was really, I mean, that was a really very violent movie. It's, it's, you, you didn't like, at least I didn't walk away from it feeling gross. It was know? video game violence. It wasn't, yeah, yeah. it wasn't news violence. Mm -hmm. uh, local. I'm not just talking new. I'm talking local news violence, like that stuff that just makes you turn your stomach. So, um, you know, definitely a bar was set by the Rambo movies, and since I'm a big firm believer in balance, we're about to really lower the bar here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Some people might love this show, um, but uh, I like it for its 80s wholesomeness. It is <laughs> Rambo, the force of freedom. A lot of people might not even know this thing exists, but in the 80s when Coleco did the exceptional Rambo, force of freedom toy line, I'm a huge fan. Tony, our good friend from Analog yeah. Toys, is a huge fan of the force of freedom toy line. Such an awesome toy line. Basically bigger Joes. You want mm -hmm. Black Series G.I. Joe, they sort of, the precursor of that came out with the Force of Freedom with great weapons and, and uh, removable holsters and all that stuff. Awesome toy line. The cartoon is something to behold. It, it, <laughs> it, 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 they're taking, much like the Robocop cartoon, um, they're taking this R-rated um, movie and turning it into a cartoon. And it's kind of like the cartoon movie based on an R-rated movie by which all should be judged by. And some of the uh, things that you need to change, you know, it's got the typical G.I. Joe guys ejecting out of jets with, you know, parachuting before mm -hmm. they perish. No one ever dies in this thing. So I'm excited to just go through this uh, for the fun and wholesomeness of it, for the completely not original intention of the Rambo character as was intended yeah. by David Morell's original First Blood book. Uh, so we're, we're on the leaving, other end of the... Leaving out the PTSD and the and yeah. hardcore aspects of the character. Yeah, so we're on the other end of the spectrum here. So this will be very interesting. Uh, we're not going to be playing, if you're watching along uh, on YouTube, we're not going to be playing the video here because that's a copyright no-no. We will have some uh, screenshots there for you to uh, look at and follow along. We're going to try to describe it uh, as best as we can for people who are listening along. Uh, but the episode is easily found. Uh, Google's your friend. All you got to do is search for Rambo First Strike, Force of Freedom. Maybe you can throw in there too. Very easy to find. We're all queued up here uh, at the beginning of the episode. And uh, going to give you a countdown. Three, two, one, play. And if you aren't going to watch along, that's fine. Just listen along and this should still be quite entertaining. All set there, Eric? Yep, all set to go. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, play. And the... <laughs> <laughs> it starts with Rambo doing up his laces. And yeah. the thing that's funny is that it's... This is the music and the, <laughs> and the knife, which never gets used for, you know, hurting mm -hmm. people. The headband. Um, <laughs> it's the music right out of Rambo 2, which is yeah. what makes this so funny. They use Jerry Goldsmith's, not like a an homage to it. It is Jerry Goldsmith's actual, uh, score, the entire score yeah. from the movie. Wow. Yeah. God, I, it makes me wonder how much they had to pay for using that. I mean, that couldn't have been cheap, right? Wouldn't they have to do the, uh, get the, the, the license to play that? It, yeah, it had to be unless it's some wow. sort of, I know Stallone was personally involved in the deal because, um, he was working on, having Rocky be a, a G.I. Joe character, but then he turned around and yeah. sold the Rambo rights to Coleco, which made the Rocky deal fall apart. Rambo, uh, mm -hmm. Hasbro didn't want to do a Stallone-looking figure when they were going to have a competitor, an even bigger yeah. Joe-looking competitor on the shelf right beside. So I don't know if that was maybe Stallone helping out and saying, look, you know, in order to compete with G.I. Joe, because this show is 
uh, mm-hmm. very similar to Joe, not not yeah. as well written, not as much replay value, but uh, maybe to try to level the playing field, that music is one of the things that really helps it a lot. Mm. And what they and they must have ditched that pretty quick, I would imagine. All right, did the, any of the other episodes have it? The, oh yeah, every episode has oh, the did. entire score, all the whole run, and it's a long oh. run. I mean, there's there's dozens yeah. and dozens of episodes. Uh, if you want to establish villains, you have them almost crush a dog with a tank. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's the puppy factor. <laughs> so these are the evil forces of uh, of Savage and the Russian there, so, uh, Sergeant Havoc. Uh, I believe like he's inspired by the Russian in First Blood Part Two, who tortures Rambo. But I think he's also supposed to be kind of a, a an homage or a parody of Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Gripper, that was one of my favorite figures. Oh yeah, Tony's as well. Uh, so you got this poor town being taken over by these evil guys. They get right to the point. I mean, we're like 30 seconds into the invasion and mm-hmm. these guys have taken over. Yeah, nothing says bad like taking over a village that's got a, a church in the center. Yeah. <laughs> now, another thing that's really interesting I find about this, G.I. Joe, they had the lasers. Um, they, mm-hmm. Even though it was really, really deep-rooted in, in military realism, uh, we had blue and red lasers, and aside from the mass device five-parter, in the mass device they used actual real gun sounds, and then later they switched to laser sounds. But Rambo has real-life uh, weapon sounds, so the guns uh, are are using actual gun shooting samples. When Havoc was uh, playing with a gun on the tank, that's I believe the actual sound, or similar huh. to that sound of the tank. Huh. And uh, here is uh, Kat. She is the master of disguise. She's based on Ko from Rambo 2. Right, yeah. And that music is just wild to hear. Like, <laughs> yeah, it really adds a sense of drama to it. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a nail biter. Yeah. And this is not a Deke show. It's a Ruby Spears show. So the anim- yeah. animation is very, very good. Uh, yeah. Animation is great. The, mu- the voice acting isn't, isn't awful. Uh, I think just it's the writing of the show that makes it, a, you know, a pretty good background while you're doing something mm-hmm. else show. But in terms of just sitting there watching it by yourself, um, I was thinking this will be perfect for commentary because there's stuff <laughs> to talk about. There's stuff to la- stuff to laugh about. Yeah. Oh, here you go. Yeah. And the wig right on, <laughs> right on the mercenary with an eye patch. <laughs> Oh, here are the Pentagon. Yeah, and I thought Troutman was at Bragg, Fort Bragg. Yeah, they, yeah, they did say Fort Bragg in the movie, but uh... yeah. <laughs> get me Rambo. <laughs> Only one man can do this yeah. mission, and he's busy, Snake Eyes, and he's on another brand. So, <laughs> so get me Rambo. <laughs> oh, I love this. He's, reading... he's just chilling in the <laughs> chilling in the sailboat he's or reading, the, uh, the rowboat. He's reading a book. Like, would you ever picture Rambo in a boat reading a book? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny. It's almost like they portray portray him as like a, almost like a pacifist when he's not on mission or something. It's like you would expect he'd be in a field somewhere, like uh, I don't know, sinking fence posts or yeah. something at least. And I love that line. Uh, Your country needs you. A very yeah. different depiction of Rambo from the movies. Slightly. <laughs> like you almost expect him to salute the flag before he gets at the chopper. <laughs> instead of instead of blackmailing him into a mission. Yeah. I love they gave him Stallone's brown eyes because that's one of the things that makes him so likable in First Blood. I just finished the First Blood novel and he is not that likable in the book. But mm. um, in the in the movie, he's he's got the big doe eyes as, as the author David Morrell describes. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to get introduced to some of his teammates here. Turbo, who's the uh, race guy. Uh, of course. And I think Rambo having a team of mercenaries is perfect. I uh, really love the fourth movie for that. Him yeah. being part yeah. of a Merc group. Um, I, it would have been great if his team was more like the bad guys in the show, like Gripper mm-hmm. and Havoc. Uh, his teammates are really like kind of squeaky clean type of characters. Yeah. It, yeah, they seem to really go that G.I. Joe angle where they're, you know, it's, it's the different sort of keyed personalities, you know, that fill that uh, particular kind of niche. Mm. So there's a turbo's racing. There's been a crash and uh, he just he just crashed or is there's this turbo. He's an amazing driver. We, we got to quickly establish he's like <laughs> the best driver. And in this show, because he's such a great driver, that means he's a, one of the best pilots, too. Like, yeah. if it's a machine, he can do amazing things with it. 
What do you think of the Rambo voice actor? <laughs> like, so, he sounds like he's from Boston. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not exactly Bowie, Arizona, but the movie Rambo wasn't either. <laughs> no. uh, so that this guy's just sounds, ready to... The turbo voice, voice sounds actor? so familiar. No, no, the, the voice for, for Rambo sounds so familiar. I'm trying to place it. Yeah, he's... Uh, I'm just going to look him up right now. He's uh, yeah. prolific. Force of free... Uh, Neil Ross, Ross, I believe, is the actor. Oh, yeah. So this is uh, Springer from Transformers. I believe there he was Shipwreck on G.I. Joe. I, I do wish that Troutman sounded a little bit more like um, Richard Crenna. Because yeah. mm -hmm. just such an awesome character. Yeah, uh, Neil Ross was uh, Shipwreck on G.I. Joe. Hector Ramirez, Buzzer. So it's funny that Shipwreck is Rambo also. Yeah. Uh, Rambo there is in his hoodie. The, in the figures, they made two different kinds. The Rambo 2 uh, look with the green uh, army pants and topless with the scars. The toy had all the scars <laughs> that were cut into him from the POW <laughs> yeah. camp. And then I called that one uh, with the jeans and the hoodie the Arctic Rambo. Because when mm -hmm. it's cold, you got to put on a sleeveless hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as long as the torso's covered, the rest is okay, right? Yeah, and they actually do that in the show. Like when he, whenever he has an Arctic mission, he's got the sleeveless hoodie on because it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than He Man, who just you know went out with a battle harness. But yeah, I guess He Man had the power of Gray Skull to keep him warm. And they're introduced to Cat. They make for a nice trio. <laughs> you know, Rambo yeah. is a one-man army, but it's it's nice that even in the cartoon, they uh, say he needs a little bit of backup. <laughs> and here's the, <laughs> here's the, the muscle time. Here's the preparation. What's he doing there, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, tying his, uh, he's tying his boot. So every episode, this is kind of like by the Power of Grayskull segment or yeah. Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats, Ho. Every hero yeah. has his getting ready moment. <laughs> but what Thanks, makes it Anna. so funny is it's the music from the movie where he's about to go and kill a lot of people very violently. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> and even the imagery of the knife going in the sheath, like he's not cutting anyone on this show. He's cutting no. rope. Yeah. That's the only thing he's cutting, rope. So he's got the bow, which is cool. Cause... I, yeah, I like that he's got the bow. But he, he won't be shooting anyone with it. <laughs> He'll take out some tires. You know, that's it's handy for that. Yeah, or grappling hook. Yeah. But night mission, infiltrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the music. It's just so perfect. Wow, oh, it's just, yeah, it's so really gets it going. It makes you wonder, like, score. <laughs> what other cartoon can you just put, like, Alien soundtrack or Terminator 2 soundtrack over it and go, hey, this is, this is actually carrying the, the action along pretty well. He's an acrobat. Yeah, um, swinging over onto the bridge and catching himself upside down. <laughs> <A> commercial break. <laughs> yeah. uh, we cut, cliffhanger. Yeah, literal cliff or bridge hanger, where he's about to plummet to his death. But he's Rambo. He's exceptionally strong, and I mean the animation is fantastic. Yeah. I th it, yeah, it looks more uh, it looks more Saturday morning than daily. Yeah, animated show. Yeah, set in explosives. The thing that's funny about this show, this episode two in particular, is that he'll do a few things that we saw right out of First Blood two, like mm -hmm. you're planting explosives, which aren't going to hurt anybody. No, but uh, this is the wholesomeness that is helping wash Last Blood off of me. Like. I like to see him chopping people. There's Kirk Chop, yeah. and <laughs> he we all know them. that's an invincible move. <laughs> bayonets, like what? What are their bay yeah. bayonets on the rifles for? Yeah. So you've got some of the violent imagery, um, you know, the potential for some really gruesome violence, <laughs> but they yeah. never even they never even come close. Blowing up uh, the bridge, blows up as he's running away from it. Yeah. So Rambo has been captured because that's another one of his um, regular gimmicks is to get captured and tortured by the enemy. So we'll yeah. see how he makes out in this episode. If uh, they go a little lighter on him than they did in first blood part two is the dastardly uh, general Warhawk. Oh uh, yeah. 
He's uh, just a, like a Cobra Commander type of character who wants to rule the world. I don't think he has the charm of Cobra Commander, though. He doesn't really have anything very memorable about him. I, I would almost say that that's the one of the things about this show that maybe, I don't know, maybe that's why it wasn't quite as popular with, you know, other than Rambo and maybe a couple of the, couple of the guys that didn't have any, didn't have that same hook that G.I. Joe did, you know? It's, it's just sort of this generic guy in a military suit. Yeah, it's more like the Deke G.I. Joe where every guy just kind of talk like this and, and yeah. no um, no personality really. No. The Sunbow actors and the writing, they were able to put so such nuance um, in the characters that even with few lines and few cartoon appearances, mm -hmm. very memorable. Rambo is tied up over a snake pit here and uh, one of the villains stupidly threw his knife at him into the tree. So <laughs> he's able to retrieve the <laughs> knife by his feet, cut himself loose. Like I said, that knife ain't cutting anything except rope. <laughs> yeah. And oh, those are laser. Okay. They are shooting laser. Uh, it, the AK-47s they're shooting sound like AK-47s, but they're shooting yeah. laser bolts like on G.I. Joe. So this show would have been an 86 show, I believe, 85, 86. Yeah. Uh, so they would have been hit with the same guidelines and restrictions as the Sunbow G.I. Joe show. And here's the sequence where Rambo hunts them down one by one. Mm. And I think you'll get a kick out of this. <laughs> <laughs> so he dropped off, off camera violence <laughs> and the, <laughs> <laughs> the rifle in the tree. <laughs> yeah so we just found out why the rifles have bayonets so rambo can throw them into a tree and they they stab into the tree so they can't be retrieved and he's coming out of the water grabbing people pulling them into the water <laughs> oh See, look, there were no lasers there. There was just the uh, just the machine gun. I I did like how they had the the uh, the bullet bouncing sound in the yeah. water. That was uh, that was pretty good. Now, if there's any concern, like, are these guys going to be okay? He pulled a guy in the water. Did that guy drown? Um, <laughs> so he, off camera, of course. <laughs> he just picks a guy up, throws it, and we get a shot of both of them crawling out of the water. So they're fine, <laughs> and he just lets them, and they're defeated. <laughs> just staring at him. Yeah, <laughs> he's broken their spirit. He doesn't have to break their bones. Oh, the mud scene. <laughs> the mud. Oh, there you go. And he, and he just throws them to the ground and leaves them. <laughs> <laughs> so he's breaking their spirit here. This is how you um, make something uh, G-rated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, just, they just are embarrassed, so they take their toys and go home. <laughs> and each time he does this, they grab their head like, ow, <laughs> and that's it. It's basically the tap out. This is such a great sequence. <laughs> it's first blood, just, uh, you know, um, Sesame Street version. <laughs> yeah, just, just sanitized right away. <clears throat> and I don't know, is this so bad? I mean, it's funny. It's entertaining. Um, I, I take this over Last Blood. <laughs> <laughs> and they even show you in the background, the guys climbing out of the hole. Don't worry, they won't starve to death down there. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't show you eating a sandwich. Like we're getting our <laughs> nourishment. <laughs> it's so safe. Get some milk and cookies before they go back out. Yeah, I think uh, Ruby Spears was definitely a lot more wholesome, or attempted to do more wholesome stuff than uh, than uh, Sunbow did. Sunbow seemed to be the edgy one of the animation studios, Transformers mm -hmm. and GI Joe, and then Visionaries and Inhumanoids later on. Definitely edgy. Filmation yeah. was the they were wholesome too, but more like a, a mature type of uh, inspiration for kids that when kids grew up, they could go back and get re-inspired all over again. Uh, this was just more like uh, for your two-year-old, you know, to keep mm -hmm. them, uh, you know, not saying like if people might enjoy this today and, and I do, <laughs> you know, I'm not saying it's just for two-year-olds, uh, but uh, it definitely doesn't seem to have the, the replay value of G.I. Joe. Oh, what strikes me is like on a narrative level, it's it's really sort of one level. Yeah, you know, there's Very nothing happening that there's no big kind of moral conundrum going on here yet. It's kind of just Rambo, um, I guess, gently taking guys down kind of <laughs> one by one. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like you know, Joe. You could get some pretty compelling storylines in there, and there's just not. You know, it's like just scene after scene of Rambo knocking a guy down and running off. And and there were injuries on Joe. Some guys had to go for hospital stay, but yeah. everyone's getting up here. Uh, Rambo yeah. on a motorcycle. He's charging the enemy. He's trying to get through the bridge. <laughs> the, the headlight on the yeah. motorcycle gets <laughs> shot. 
So that's kind of in the same vein of the hand getting shot out of your or the gun getting shot out of your hand. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. They really kind of take they take those the the kind of um, beats of the the Rambo movie, you know, especially Rambo uh, Rambo two, and just sort of sanitize them and put them into the the cartoon with not not really any narrative back in them. You know, it's like they're they're just kind of these these tropes that they've kind of cleaned up and just plopped in as like it's kind of a scene by scene recreation. It's exactly. really really odd. Exactly. Yeah. The context is gone. It's just, mm -hmm. well, remember when he came out of the mud? There, he did yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Tierra Libre is, uh, they revisited it a lot in the show. I, I guess it's a mm -hmm. made up, kind of like G.I. Joe, has its made up countries in the comic. Uh, mm -hmm. It's this land that Rambo is forever battling to keep free. <laughs> <laughs> fate of the world is whether or not Tierra Libre is liberated. I mean, he's the American patriot, but he's off defending Tierra Libre. Now, here's this is another really funny part of this inaugural episode. This is the 6x6 Defender, Rambo's uh, six-wheel Jeep. And this thing is as bad as they come. Uh, and uh, enjoy it while it lasts. Because <laughs> that's a real head-scratcher. I guess they make a bunch of them. Um, I don't know if they're trying to tell kids that's okay. Break yours. Just go buy a new one. But, uh, yeah. this one, this particular one, it won't last, <laughs> which was surprising <laughs> to me because it's not, I guess they blew up a lot of vehicles in GI Joe too. Um, but man, it's, just, it was surprising to me to see this awesome, awesome Jeep just bite it very quickly into this episode. And we got a little game of chicken here. Rambo and the Defender charging a, a convoy of jeeps and tanks <laughs> <laughs> with the squid. I love the little moments, like the close-up of the eyes and squinting. He's got it on autopilot, <laughs> and he's manning the <laughs> missile launcher on the back. <laughs> oh, my Julius God. <laughs> Did you see the tank? <laughs> yeah. The tank got hit by a missile, and we see the two drivers inside perfectly fine step away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that again, again. Yeah, they're okay. It's those new, uh, those new, new disposable cardboard tanks. Yeah. So, <laughs> so everyone's safe. Got the grenades. Pulling the pin with his teeth, of course. Yeah. He is a one-man army. Yeah, he should have had something like this in the movies. That's this is the <laughs> one thing the movies were missing that the cartoon had. The Defender is awesome. Yeah. That's a pretty cool military vehicle, yeah. I've never seen a six-wheel Jeep. I don't know if that would help. I don't, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, extra, every, extra axle? I don't know. <laughs> everything in the show is more is better, so yeah. two more wheels on it. So he's going to charge a tank with the Defender, with the Jeep. Uh, it pulls the gun off, and there goes the <laughs> Defender. <laughs> it's okay. They're uh, they're only twenty nine ninety nine at Toys R Us kids. Yeah. <laughs> Pick up get another, another one. one. It's all good. Yeah, but that gun was removable off the defender. Oh, luckily there's a trench that he can duck into and dodge a tank, crushing him. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you <laughs> clowns can get off. <laughs> you clowns. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, interesting to see um, Rambo saying things he'd never say in the movies. I don't think he'd ever yeah. call someone a clown. Well, I love that sort of pseudo Bostonian too. This is where you clowns get off. <laughs> well, Stallone had kind of like, did he have a California accent? You know, like there's always yeah. some sort of war going on somewhere. Like it, it wasn't necessarily. He's from Bowie, Arizona, but um, yeah, it's not. It's not an Arizona accent. I don't. know. It's hard to place because he's he's done sort of so many accents that are so identifiable like you know everybody knows the rocky accent you know yeah. where he's, he's the the philly, philly accent but uh yeah i'm not sure what they were going for with this one and to his credit in last blood stallone is doing the first blood rambo accent that he did you know yeah. like, like sometimes you like you know like he the certain way of pronouncing l's and stuff like that he was uh -huh. he was doing it again which isn't stallone's natural way of doing it no. Now they're having a dinner, Rambo in a golf shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he cleans up good that guy. <laughs> He's wearing a short sleeve golf shirt. They never made a figure of that. They should have. <laughs> <laughs> and we end on this very serious to be continued while he's wearing a golf shirt at a nice yeah. fancy dinner. 
<laughs> based on characters created by David Morrell. Um, so David Morrell uh, saw the new Rambo movie and um, he wasn't impressed by it. He said something to the effect of, I'm embarrassed to have my name attached to it. Oh, wow. Um, and there was a lot of, uh, you know, I guess that stirred up a lot of people. That's how he felt. I mean, he created the character. Mm -hmm. it, the Rambo in First Blood isn't even like the, the character he created. So he's totally within his rights and probably has been for a long time saying, this isn't the character as I originally intended. Like, I appreciate the the fans um but that's that's not what the original intent was and having just finished the first blood novelization with a review coming soon on the channel it is just stunning i was i was hmm. breathtaking uh, my breath was taken away when i was finished it because it it was just so much more powerful and deep than i ever thought a novel called first blood based on or you know which inspired a movie called first blood could ever be it really gets deep to the heart of uh, you know, the essence of war and hate. He wrote mm -hmm. such a deep, powerful, intelligent, emotionally intelligent book, which, you know, First Blood, I love it. But now I see like First Blood didn't even scratch the surface of the psychology of war that Morell talked about in the novel. And speaking of not even scratching the surface, <laughs> that was Rambo First Strike, <laughs> which is an even yeah. further departure from David Morell's first blood and uh just seeing david morrell's name attached to this cartoon i'd love to ask him one day what do you think of force oh, of freedom <laughs> <laughs> if if what is it last blood uh, uh embarrassed him I, i'm sure this cartoon would make him want to go hide in a hole <laughs> well you know it's it's funny sometimes uh, uh you know i don't know about david morrell in particular but there are some people in the entertainment industry and i'm sure you have met some of them uh they uh, they have a, a surprisingly glowing opinion of things that paid for swimming pools, uh, for for yachts mm -hmm. that paid the mortgage. Um, you know, maybe years later when they don't no longer have those toys, that they uh, let their true opinions of the property let uh, come out. Uh, but what what did you think <laughs> of Rambo uh, first Ooh. strike? <clears throat> yeah. Well, um, <laughs> I well. think that says it all. <laughs> 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 well, you know what? I th I think that's really the th the thing is that I mean the story was almost non-existent, right? I mean, I I really think it was all about recreating some of these moments of the film that that you know whatever kid may or may not have seen. I know when I was a kid, for whatever reason, we were allowed to watch stuff like Rambo and First Blood and everything like that. And I saw those movies when I was a kid when I didn't really even get it. Um, you know, we weren't allowed to see anything that was like supernatural in, in origin, which is, uh, you know, if you compare it to the kind of violence and everything is, is fairly ironic, but, but, you know, I don't recall this cartoon very well. I, m I must have watched it a couple of times and I vaguely remember seeing parts of it, but, but seeing it again, it just strikes me as they're looking for opportunities to sort of recreate parts and scenes of the movie, um, just in a, very uh very clean way you know it's like you know very almost like non-violent way like the shot of him you know jumping down out of the tree and the shot of him coming up through the through the the water and through the mud and all that sort of stuff i mean those are all sort of moments in in flat or in in, uh, in uh, first blood and rambo that you saw and it's it's not i mean obviously the you know, the, the movies were quite a bit more violent. You just, you don't see the, the carnage, you know, yeah. in the cartoon. And I, I don't know, I guess it's just something like that where they're just trying to popularize sort of the, 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 the movie and familiarize the, 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 the kids with what's going on in the movies, but just not go over the top uh, with the, with the, uh, the violence. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know if woke is the word, but it, it feels like, mm -hmm. it almost feels like a modern, very, very safe, sanitized, cartoon that you would see these days compared to what was mm -hmm. out right around the same time like we're direct comparison to gi joe uh mm -hmm. to transformers over mm -hmm. on filmation even like even to he-man um you know my memories of he-man and she-ra those were really fun uh very uh clean shows but i just i i can't help but feel like even he-man had a little bit more of an edge to it yeah, or, or at least emotional ma uh, maturity than than this, which didn't have a, you know, it didn't have a story, so th yeah. there's nothing to get into. Well, I think the difference with with He Man is that you had, you know, uh, you know, and, and and Joe, and I it, particularly, I think He Man, you know, had, lessons. Um, yeah, it had lessons, and it had kind of a 
uh, easily identifiable sort of sort of um, uh, s- greater story or, or you know or, or or incorporating that that sort of I don't know like a like a payoff or kind of a you know goals and things that these characters are doing that you you know they see in the end they kind of reflect on the episode and you know what it meant and you know and and what it might mean personally and say hey you know you saw this you know this part where this character lied and got into all this trouble and if you do that this is the kind of thing that can happen and it sort of like wraps it all around where i don't think you get that at all with the Rambo <laughs> Force of <Freedom. laughs> what do you think the lesson was of this <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> don't hurt people <laughs> yeah stay out of the mud i don't know <laughs> um yeah just uh, run away if you knock someone down you know, make sure yeah. they're make sure they're okay and then run away <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch him for a while with the same shot of his uh, close up. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just kind of a bizarre, uh, uh, bizarre thing. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to seem to carry any sort of payoff to it. <clears throat> and this show feels a lot like Centurions to me too. Uh, Centurions is another one of my favorite vintage toy lines, uh, and it had a pretty good run of a show. I believe also Ruby Spears did that one as well. <laughs> and nice animation, great music. Uh, pretty good voice acting too and just the stories aren't there it was it's mm. very similar in feel to rambo mm. it's um uh oh jake you better beam down you know whatever weapon system and it's just he'll use one for a, a minute uh oh i need more firepower crystal beam down detonator and every s- episode is the same so it's the yeah. lack lack of lessons the lack of actual story that makes characters I don't know, grow. Like, I don't know if mm-hmm. any G.I. Joe character really grew from the first time we saw them to the final time we saw them. Mm-hmm. But, it, but it certainly felt like these were developed characters who were using uh, their experience for to, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, help avoid disasters being planned by Cobra. It just, uh, it, I felt like it, it not only worked better um, in terms of story, but also um, fun. Uh, like the mm-hmm. you know i just find the sunbow shows to be much more entertaining fun quotable uh this was a blast <laughs> this was a lot of fun too um but i don't know if this will be as much fun <laughs> if i pop it in again in a year uh and yeah. sit down and watch it so this is i think more of like a you know uh doesn't really have the lasting uh, the replay value of the other shows yeah, I think from a strictly, uh, I don't know, curiosity factor, it's 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 interesting to at least view. But you know, I, I really, I, I'd have to say, I'd, I'd I'd chalk that up to the writing. I think you know when you when you compare it to the stuff oh, yeah. that came out of. Uh, uh, you know, Sunbow. I mean, they had some top-notch like like writers and comic writers and TV writers that were working on that stuff, and even some of the other shows. I think what was it, uh, Jason the Wheeled Warriors, was oh, it yeah. that like J. Michael Straczynski, uh, you know, wrote, and yeah. you know, you can really see it with that. And I, I mean, I'm not familiar with who wrote it, but I, you know, watching the credits after it was rolling, I, I didn't see anybody that stuck out as, oh yeah, I remember this person or this person, you know. Um, yeah. I, yeah, just I, it didn't have any kind of kind of weight to it, and I I don't know that you really always expect that out of a out of a cartoon, but you know there's certainly other cartoons that did a much better job at 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 creating like a, a cohesive story and and you know something that kind of wrapped it around and turned it a, into something of value, not just a half hour of moving images with a rough story <laughs> thrown in. Yeah, <laughs> <You know? clears throat> there were definitely a lot of writers from the '80s. Uh, Straczynski is one of them. Uh, Bob Forward, Larry DeTillo, uh, Buzz Dixon, um, you know, they went to work on a cartoon and a lot of the time the purpose was to sell toys, but they never approached mm-hmm. it that way. They didn't go, yeah. okay, my job today is to sell as many toys as possible. Their, mm-hmm. um, their purpose was the same purpose any other time they sat down to write a story. I am here to write a great story. You tell me mm-hmm. what his name is and what he looks like, uh, and I'll take care of the rest. I'll, I'll tell you about his spirit. I'll tell you about his motivations, his fears. Uh, you know, one episode that just pops into my mind is the GI Joe one, where they are all having nightmares. Cobra makes them all mm-hmm. have nightmares, and that's the the low light episode where we really get to the root of what drives low light. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the kind of cool, quiet Joe who gets pushed to his brink. That's the type of stuff that makes people remember uh, these old shows fondly. Yeah, totally. I remember um, my favorite episode of Joe, and I. 
want to say, I can't remember which Joe it was now. Um, it might have been Shipwreck, where he he goes to the town and he wakes up and it's like they're, oh yeah, yes, uh huh, and they're they're playing with his mind the whole time and like he's like something's wrong with this town but I can't figure out what it is <laughs> yeah. and he's got and, gray yeah, hair. I, like, yeah, that like that show that I mean it gave me nightmares when I was a kid. That was like legitimately <laughs> scary. You yeah. know, and I can't say there's too many shows out there that like really affected me that way when, when they had such a strong storyline that resonated like that. Yeah. And um I, yeah, Joe did. Joe had some of these, you know, just crazy episodes. I remember the other one I really always really liked was when they they got the telephone call from the guy that was Viper called himself the Viper. <laughs> yeah, I so it am starts the this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. the big misunderstanding. I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and sh- that's that's genius. That's clever. You know, that's really good stuff. I almost wonder, like, if they should have gotten um, the guy who played Barbecue, because Barbecue was heavily featured in that episode. Should have gotten Barbecue to play Rambo. Yeah. Ah, Colonel Troutman. It's nice to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds all vaudeville. The, the Bostonian <laughs> accent. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so uh, yeah. that that is first blood, uh, or sorry, first strike, <laughs> Rambo first strike, <laughs> slip of the tongue. There, that was a lot of fun. Uh, thanks so much for joining me on this, Eric. Oh, so, it was excellent. Yeah. Do you have any interest of uh, doing some more of these for uh, Force of Freedom? Anytime. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> uh, give a plug to uh, Eric's uh, online social media presence. He's uh, at Uncle Deluxe Art on Instagram. Definitely want to check that out. Some awesome artwork. Are you uh, working on anything now, art or models? Yeah, you know, I've been doing uh, sketching, trying to get into um, Inktober, you know, which is trying to do a do a drawing a day. But honestly, I the last this last month, you probably noticed I've been a little more um, um, uh, absent than normal, and I we've been so busy at work, it's just crazy. So I'm trying to kind of catch up on everything and and do all that stuff. So, uh, but uh, but yeah, I'm I'm always around, always posting up stuff, you, you know, every every now and then, I guess I can say. Awesome. Yeah, it's important to pay those bills. And big thank you to everyone who helps me pay my bills. The Patreon tribe, much appreciated. Uh, If anyone out there is interested in supporting the channel, the podcast, uh, head over to patreon.com slash Michael Mercy. Eric, you are a Patreon supporter. Thank you so much. Really appreciate all of your help and support with the channel. And uh, everyone out there, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed this. Eric, have a great night. Thank you very much, you too. And everybody else, have an awesome day. And if you can't, make one. Take care, everyone. Nerd must stay. Nerd must stay. This is where you clowns get off. <laughs>